I was supposed to go up to Tulsa this afternoon. I checked the weather. It says, oh, you only got a 10% chance of thunderstorm, and that's down from 20%. I make it 40 minutes up the road to M uh, Muskogee, and uh, yeah, things have changed. Let me show you a picture of the radar. Well, there's no sense in rushing too fast. It's on top of the boat right now, so. Hopefully she's where I left her when I get there. That is what we're driving into. And yeah, I, I see what that is. Looks like everybody decided to get off the highway. I've never seen another car on this exit. Ah, now we got hailed. Okay, we're moving again. I'm kind of between two cells. You know, it'll make me feel better if I can just see the boat still sitting there. Can't even see where the lake is underneath the blob now. Come on, baby, show me your anchor light. Shit. There's the hot tamale. Can't see the boat. All right, there she is. Right out there. Hallelujah. Yeah, that is a relief. Doesn't look too bad, so I'm gonna go on and get out to her. A lot of water everywhere. You know, it rains in where the mast is. Left the pilot house door open. Left the main hatch cracked, so it'd be cooler in here. Definitely cooler in here now. Look at this. We need to weld the mast in. And forward is just fine. Have a little water come down the companion way, but it's got a collection system on that. That hatch is closed now. All right, I swear, baby, I'll never leave you again. I wonder how that happened. It's definitely been blowing harder than this when I was gone. At least I closed the windows, and hey, I got that one fixed, so I can close it. And I get to mop up everything again. We obviously rolled a little bit. And yes, latches for the refrigerator doors are on the lift. That, that is, if there was a lift, they'd be on it. We are right over the edge of our anchor. So, I don't think we're dragging. We just get it all stretched tight. Jeez, the wind just shifted. Now we're healing the other direction. That pin is us. Look how fast this thing grows. Boom. And that noise is the anchor alarm. Yeah, we moved around the circle a little bit. You know what's odd is none of the crates fell over down below in the cargo hold. They're stacked like four tall there. Well, let's check the bailout system just to make sure, right? You know, that starter's still flaky, but I love hearing it start up. It might as well turn into the wind a little bit, right? Shouldn't need it, but good to know you got it, right? No, I don't have to wash last night's crop of mayflies off the deck. Yeah, there's a big cloud around us. Things out of the south now, that's weird. Yes. Do not do that again, it'll be fine. Not that it matters a lot, but let's turn this shit off. Look at this. Look at the swell come in from the south. Man, that's weird because the wind hadn't been blowing from the south up here. We are dragging anchors. See all these dots in here? That's our normal circle. I expanded out to 230 feet because that's where we've gone to. And that's why I don't like that. That's what's behind us. But, you know, we're doing okay. We're not moving too much. Tested the engine and we move easily into this. So I can always motor off. We're just going to pay attention. I see a little break over there. And it looks like it's actually clearing out to the west, so. Oh, well, we're using the engine now just to lighten it up on the anchor. I'm not sure I need to do that, but it makes me feel better and it feels like practice. She doesn't need much pitch at all. Almost was there. I gotta be careful not going too far forward because I'll run over the anchor road, which it floats, and uh, could foul the prop. Definitely don't want to do that. I'll put it in neutral. That should work all right. Check that anchor. 
anchor. Okay, the uh, mission for the next fair weather day is to bring up the anchor line and weave in little markers so we know exactly how much line we have out. Cause maybe I just had that much and it would just, you know, land on the bottom with the chain. So I can't be positive I'm dragging because it could just be straightening out the chain finally. So I need to know exactly how much road I have out and then I can know exactly if I'm dragging the anchor or not. I've raised my expectations so maybe it'll stay there. Darwin can check it. I turn this back on, you can see we scoot a little closer to shore and now we're drifting back and forth in here. And using the measure feature, it says we moved uh, 67 feet. So yeah, we're gonna pull up the anchor in some clear weather and see what she's doing. Maybe it's filed, you know, it can wrap around the chain and so forth. And we can always put more chain on too to get more weight. This bottom is so muddy though. You think it just keeps sinking down and stick. Yeah, that's the nice thing to wake up to. The rest of the night was very uneventful. Now maybe I can make it up to Tulsa. <laughs> this is all mayflies. When Matthew was out here, he was cleaning up this mess and he said, I thought my days of cleaning up after orgies were done. Man, what I wouldn't get for a diesel outboard. And I think I'll get one, it just won't be in the United States. Cause here we're all freaked out about, oh, the environment. Never mind, that's the only reason I carry about 25 gallons of gasoline. Everybody freaks out about propane on a boat. You know, I, shoot. Any kid that had a half decent upbringing knows that getting propane to explode is hard to do. It's gotta be the right air fuel mixture. Getting gasoline to explode, that's easy. We're just taking the boat out for a gentle cruise today and we're practicing some uh, anchor setups. And it pulled in 40 feet of chain just fine, so I think I'm gonna put another 40 feet on it. And then we're gonna put markers on the line so we know how much we put out. That'll give us 80 chain and then the am steel. I like talking about boats and I like conversing about boats, but uh, anchoring is a hard thing to have discussion with people about because, you know, they have their way of doing it. That's the right way. And in truth, if you look around the planet, you know, there are all kinds of ways of doing this. Anchor uh, spools up on deck in the commercial industry, fishing, especially where people need to drop the anchor quickly. You know, like the Northwest where there's lots of rocks and heavy currents. A lot of boats out there have spools like this with the anchor chain up on deck. The advantages to it is it doesn't get fouled because I've had anchors coming up out of a locker down below and they get fouled up so then you got to go down below and unfoul it. Now as a single-handed sailor, you know, you're trying to get the damn thing out in a hurry and all of a sudden it's not coming out so now you got to go down below and you know, that's a messed up situation. Uh, so I like this a lot. The downside to it is you're carrying more weight up on deck and uh, that will make you a little more you know, prone to healing. Uh, but another advantage is all the mud and the water and the salt stay up on deck and get washed off on every rainfall. So that's a good thing. Uh, it takes up a lot of deck space, so that's a bad thing. You know, we got deck space, that's not a huge deal. So, you know, you find the answer that's the right solution for you. And when somebody comes along and wants to tell you the right way to do it, blow them off because uh, you've likely put a lot more thought into your project than they have, you know. Now, if there's an idea out there, sure, there's other ways. Sure, you know, you can be patient with them, but that, you know, this is the right way to do it. And especially, don't go and show me a, West Marine manual. West Marine's trying to sell you shit. And of course they're gonna have their way and they're not gonna have a way that includes products they don't carry. So don't let that get to you. There is no way, there's different ways. Find the one that works for you. Find why you like it. Change it up if you need to. But those are decisions that every boat needs to make themselves. So here I am going from 40 feet of chain to 80 feet of chain because my setup, this diameter, that motor can handle 80 feet, I think. And I know it can't handle 150. So we're finding our sweet spot. 
And that's what you do. You work the problem until you get a solution that works for you. I tell people anchoring is a lot like a religion. Once you're convinced about something, there's no unconvincing you. So having the conversation is kind of a moot point. Now we pull it just a little further. We'll take that stopper off. Stopper's off. Now we'll give it some slack. We'll make sure she's ready to drop. There we go. Now she wants to go on her own. Undog the spool. You go down, turn off the hydraulics, and then all we gotta do is let go of the brake and off goes the anchor. You know, I love talking about religion. I love talking about politics and all those things, but I like having a conversation about it where the other person's actually listening and thinking about how I feel about it and telling me why they feel the way they do. There's always a reason behind it. You know, it's like when we get so divided, like, you know, we're Republican or Democrat. And there's no conversation. It's just talking points going back and forth. That's, that's not a conversation, that's being a child. You know, take the time, I think, and learn to listen to people, because it doesn't matter what they are. There's a reason for it. Try and find that reason. That is learning. There's a little creek that comes in over there. You guys fishing up in it. Look at that beautiful lawn coming down. This is gorgeous territory. Let it out, lock it down. And he reverses the boat and we pull on it to set it. Okay, it's coming tight now. Okay, she's tight. So that's about 60 feet of chain in the water and now we can mark off this rope. So this is marking off the rope for me. Some people like using uh, color codes, but I think knots work better because you can feel them in the dark. You don't have to actually see them. So at 40 feet, I put one knot in at you know 80 feet, two knots and so forth. So now we're up to six here at the end of the line, 240 feet, plus some extra on the spool. So we got 80 feet of chain out. We're about 700 feet from the shore. We're gonna let another 80 feet out so we have 160 feet of scope. Here, 40, 80. Start the engine and back into it with a little pressure. Yeah, that's tight. All right, it's hard. You now the chart plotter will let us do a couple things, like we can do a measurement here and say, okay, we know we're there and we dropped the anchor right there on that X. And that says we're 157 feet. We know we let 180 feet out about, so that seems right. And we can measure back to the nearest. Uh, we don't want to hit that part and that's almost 600 feet away. So it's the trade-off between scope, how much line you got out, and where you're gonna bump and where the navigation channel is. Remember, work like a captain, play like a pirate. All right, it's time to turn off those videos and get out there in your shop, start making your dream happen. What'd you make today? <laughs>